What is a Gantt chart? I get asked this all the time, and by the end of this video, you're gonna learn exactly what is a Gantt chart, the purpose of a Gantt chart, and how does a Gantt chart look like. And if you wanna become a Project Ninja, stay tuned to the end of this video because I have a really special checklist just for you that's gonna help you be successful on projects. I promise. Hi, if you're new here, welcome. Subscribe to the best project management and career advice coming to you every Wednesday. Now, if you're excited about learning about Gantt charts, please like this video, let's get to it. What is a Gantt chart? A Gantt chart is a type of bar chart that illustrates the project schedule. It can also show dependencies amongst activities and can actually show you the current schedule of those particular activities. What it is not, it's not the project plan. And that's a big mistake a lot of people make. It's really all there to show you about milestones and timing of your activities. Is a Gantt chart right for your project? Well, in order to answer that question, first let's have an understanding of the benefits and disadvantages of a Gantt chart so you can decide if this is going to be a good tool for you. So what are some of the benefits of a Gantt chart? Well, it's an amazing tool to see at a glance all of your high level milestones and major activities within your project from start to finish. So wonderful tool for that, great planning tool. A second thing that it also is, it can show you dependencies of tasks. And in the planning stage, this becomes really important because it's gonna help you have an understanding of resource loading and some other things, and perhaps where there may be some overlap of activities that you may have to put some risk mitigation plan into. And last but not least, it's a great way to understand the sequencing of events because you can have things organized in a way where you can kind of see how each one is feeding into each other. So that is definitely some core benefits of a Gantt chart. So what are some disadvantages of a Gantt chart? Well, first and foremost, it can be really, really overwhelming to project team members who are not used to working with Gantt charts. There are a lot of individuals out there who are project team members who just don't work in a Gantt chart daily. And it can be extremely overwhelming, particularly when you have the one that's at a glance and is kind of showing everything. So that can be a real big roadblock and really create some issues for your team because they start to feel overwhelmed. A second aspect of Gantt charts, which is really important and ties into why it's not the project plan, is that there really isn't anywhere to communicate, provide comments, and really manage your tasks on an individual level. It really is an overview at a glance. So that's a real big disadvantage and why you don't wanna have it your main document. It's a supporting document, which is really important to understand. So. With that in mind, and those two big disadvantages, you can still have a Gantt chart as a project manager to have that overview, and you may need it in order to share it with your sponsors. But you may want to consider for the rest of your team, depending on how big your project is, that you can do a project calendar instead, more of a calendar format. Particularly if you have a smaller project with more compressed timelines, that may be something that is maybe a little bit easier to manage, particularly if you have a team that feels a little overwhelmed on a Gantt chart. Gantt chart examples. Now the cool thing with Gantt charts is there's many ways to create a Gantt chart. And so I'm gonna share with you all the different ways you can do it. So the first one is Word. You can actually create a Gantt chart in Word. I do this for very simple, small projects when I just wanna have an understanding of the ultra overarching uh, timeline that kind of at a glance. That's a really easy way to do it. And it's something that is very simple and a lot of people can understand. And again, because it's in Word, you're not, you're not putting in a lot of stuff in there. The second aspect is Excel. This is probably a little more common for a lot of people because it does act uh, very traditionally to some other Gantt charts that are out there. And again, if you're working with Excel in, with a project plan, those two really merge well together. So you may wanna consider using that. Another one is um, Visio. So Visio really acts very similar in look and feel to let's say Microsoft Project, which I'll talk about in a moment. So Visio, it's gonna show you dependencies, you can put in your start and end dates, all that uh, great fun stuff that has some advantages uh, to then let's say a Word document or Excel document that do not have those types of links. And last but not least, one of the creme de la creme when it comes to Gantt charts uh, is Microsoft Project. Uh, that's really what Microsoft Project is. It's a Gantt chart. It's a huge Gantt chart, but it is programmed. So you have dependencies and you can really easily move things around because 
it's a program, it's a software program, and it's gonna do it for you, and you can import dates from other Excel sheets, etc. So you just have to decide which one is for you, and I really do it based on the simplicity or complexity of a project as to which one I'm gonna use. One thing just to take note of, um, if you're gonna do a Gantt chart and you're gonna use Microsoft Project, just make sure everyone has access to it because you're gonna to have to get licensing for everyone on that. So that's just a little side note for you. And those are examples of some Gantt charts. Now that you know everything about Gantt charts, I would like for you to go to the link under this video, this YouTube video, grab this. This is an amazing resource for you, a checklist to teach you all the things you have to be aware of, of how to make your project successful. It is chock full of tons of stuff and it's free, just for you. So I wanna thank you for staying to the end of this video. I really appreciate it. Any comments you have, please put them below. I do respond back. And on that note, I look forward to seeing you at the next video. See you later, bye.